kids, if you're going to build something custom, you make sure you can fit it in a case. So hey there gang, happy new year. This is just going to be a quick little video to discuss a project I've got coming up over the next few months and maybe ask you guys a question about it. Um, today I've been cleaning up the shop a little bit, organizing things, trying to get a handle on it. Here's a free tip. At some point you'll be in a home center or a hardware store and you'll see a big bin of these things, these microfiber cloths, and you'll look at them in that six pack for a reasonable price and you'll say those would make excellent towels for around the shop and you were very, very wrong. These things, um, you know, you'll spend several years probably justifying that purchase to yourself because they hold on to every little tiny scrap of wood fiber or, you know, piece of plain shaving that you generate and they will refuse to let them go even if you launder it. So, yeah, no. I'm looking at my schedule here and feeling a little bit guilty. Well, my schedule is a piece of paper with pencil on it because it's ridiculously low tech and I'm loath to change it. It functions for me. But I got around uh, 14, 15 jobs on here, representing probably 20, 21 full days worth of work. And then there's, you know, the editing, the video stuff comes after that. Um, but I'm feeling guilty because I'm supposed to be building an instrument right now. Actually, I really wanted to get it done in like late November, December, but this happens essentially 100% of the time. Repairs go long. Um, schedules change, especially here in the winter, you know, person might not be able to drop off or pick up on the day they thought they could. And then there's a classic where I'll be talking with someone about a particular repair, get everything squared away, and they'll show up on the day with two or maybe even three other guitars saying, hey, why don't you just work on these at the same time? It's like, where am I going to fit that in here? Yeah, January's booked, February's booked, I'm booking into March at this point. Um, but that's the guilty thing, you know. People frequently ask me, hey, what happened to that historical guitar build you were doing a few years ago? You know, all the guitars from the same tree. That was a good idea. What happened to those videos? And I have to chuckle at that point to keep from crying because um, three years ago, I had sort of enough, kind of enough time in the schedule to allow me to do that. It's all after hours, unpaid labor, and I wasn't making nearly as many videos then as I am now. I got halfway into it and I managed to seriously mess up my knee. This is one that I had previously broken about 20 years ago. I ended up working while standing on one foot for better part of two months because I couldn't afford to take the time off. And I got behind. Uh, I never caught up. I do anticipate getting back into that and finishing it up one day, but it's sort of lower on the priority list because there are people who want to pay me money for doing this stuff, and those are the people I'm going to actually work for, right? I have to make hay while the sun shines. I've been asked to build something. I was talking with a, uh, a customer who's uh, brought me a lot of work in the last few years, and we were discussing Irish bazookis, which some of you will know, some of you might not be familiar with. They're a flat top instrument, kind of like a mandolin, four courses, two strings each, and they're prevalent in Celtic music culture. Uh, obviously, the bazooki itself is from around the Mediterranean. It was transported to Ireland in the 60s and 70s and became part of the sound there. But what really struck this player, his name is Gregory Swain, was a video he'd seen of a mandocello bazooki made by Paul Hathaway in London, England. It's kind of a hybrid instrument on top of an already hybrid instrument design, right? So it's tuned like a cello. And I kind of think of it more as a baritone Irish bazooki. It's not really in the same tradition as the Gibson mandocello, you know? I've never made one before. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, it's like, this is my lot in life. I never get to build the same thing twice. Every time, it's the first time, right? So I'm drafting some plans right now. Uh, Greg saw the first drawings, and we discussed it, and we decided to go a little bit bigger so that we hopefully get a bigger sound out of the thing. My question to you, friends, is, well, I know you'd be interested in watching this thing being made. You've made that clear. It's the format I'm trying to figure out. Based on my own viewing experiences, checking out the analytics on my own videos and seeing what happens in other people's channels, I'm not sure if a step-by-step -step granular interface where I document every single step along the way is really what people want to see. So it would probably take 15 videos. People will say they want that, but in actuality what happens is you get maybe eight videos in and people get overloaded you know, or they'll drop out or they'll miss a video and they just don't have time to catch up. So 
especially in this case where it's going to go on for months with other stuff between. I'm still going to be making the um, repair videos. You can lose the flow, both as a viewer and probably more dangerously the maker and or video maker, because there's so much extra work involved in editing the videos as well. So I don't want to burn out on this and I don't want you as a viewer to burn out. So I'm thinking it would probably make more sense for me and be a more enriching viewing experience for you if you just let me film it all first and then edit it down into a tight, maybe one or two long, nicely put together videos that you can watch and that will keep you excited through the whole process. And, you know, I don't want to make this a step-by-step -step how to video for a couple of reasons. Number one, you know, I'm building something for the first time, so I'm really no authority on these things. And two, I think the bulk of you are really tuning in here more for inspiration, aspirational stuff, um, rather than the nitty gritty how to. Like the how to will be there if you know what you're looking at, but I think it's more fun to watch something being made in a kind of slightly more artistic sense. I'm thinking of a video series I watched uh, when I was first getting started. It was, um, I bought Bob Benedetto's uh, Building an Archtop VHS tapes, you know, five or six of them back in the 90s, because I understood that Bob Benedetto was a guy who really knew what he was talking about. Like a lot of the guitar making stuff available at that time was put out by people like you've never heard of anyone playing their instruments before. But I knew that like literally half the jazz world was playing a Bob Benedetto guitar. I thought, okay, I'm going to learn something from that. And I did. I watched the whole thing, all nine or ten hours, and I got some stuff out of it. But I really didn't want to revisit it too much after that. And I'm contrasting that with another video. It was probably only a half hour long, which was called the New Yorker Special. And it was about Jimmy DeQuisto. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. He's working on one of his arch tops for, I think it was Jim Hall, who was another 70s, 80s jazz player. It had scenes of Jimmy working and interacting with his tools and the wood and players. There was no real technical information offered explicitly. But that video, it was magic. I mean, it was truly inspirational. I haven't seen it in 20 years. I have to keep it all up here in my head because, you know, it's very, very difficult to find it. I think the person who owns the copyright will sell it to libraries for a super exorbitant fee. It's probably like 200 bucks for a half hour video. And I'm, I'm not buying that. But, you know, it was profoundly moving. And you're watching Jimmy spray lacquer in a tiny little booth with no mask on. You know, this is a guy who had serious problems with epilepsy, eventually killed him pretty young. You know, doing the best he could. And it was very inspirational. So saying that, I think I've just talked myself into it. Um, I want to make a video like that rather than explaining how I cut the curves in a lining strip, you know? So there'll still be a repair video coming out every week, but this is going to be going on as well. And um, I've actually put a series of X's on my calendar to hopefully get this done. So thanks for watching. You know, I really appreciate it. Um, I know I come off as a bit of a curmudgeon sometimes, but that's just the extension of an insular sardonic personality. Um, just this far away from misanthrope. All of you who sent the holiday greetings, thank you so much. I really appreciate them. I'm still getting hit with an awful lot of questions. I try to answer the easy ones. If you send me three pages worth of text, I probably do not have time to go through all of it and solve all your problems. Let's all have a good year. You know, we'll look out for one another and try to have a little fun along the way. See you again soon.